I have been more visible in terms of talking about science and faith than many scientists uh, have been, even though 40% of us are believers in a personal God. That's well documented by various surveys. It's not necessarily an easy thing, though, for a scientist to talk about this issue. There's a bit of a taboo in academic circles about discussing matters of faith. That will empty the seminar room about as quickly as any topic I know of. Uh, people are uncomfortable with that, and there's a sense that that is not what science is about, and you should leave that uh, for your home or your church and not bring these topics together. I understand the reasons for that discomfort on many people's part. They don't want to see science mixed together uh, with a spiritual perspective. If what you're looking at is really a scientific question, you should do science to answer it. At the same time, I think it's unfortunate uh, that that view has led many people to believe that science and faith are in fact utterly incompatible and that there is no way to bring the two together. I was motivated to become more open about my own faith, in part by talking to many young people who have arrived at a point of crisis in their own experience. Many of these are young people who were raised in a home where faith was practiced. They've internalized this. It has become very important to them. But it is a faith that has taught them that science might be dangerous because it might disagree with a particular interpretation of Scripture. <clears throat> In that situation, as they learn about what science actually tells us about evolution, about the age of the universe, uh, they find that they are in crisis trying to put these things together and they're looking around for an experience that might actually allow that uh, comprehensive uh, harmony to be discovered. I have found that in my own experience since shortly after I became a believer and realized there was no real conflict between belief in a creator God and using science to understand how God had done that creation. But yet there wasn't much out there to point to uh, for people in that circumstance to help them see how to put these worldviews together in a, in a harmony that could be actually quite reassuring and comforting. And so I decided to speak more openly about this and it has been, for the most part, uh, a really exhilarating experience. It has resulted in my having the chance to talk to thousands of people about a topic which often isn't discussed, and uh, in a small way, perhaps, uh, to encourage people to think these issues through and not just put them to the side. I have encountered some resistance. For the most part, my scientific colleagues have been quite respectful but an occasional scientist has complained that this is really an inappropriate topic uh, for somebody who calls himself a scientist to be discussing, that that just shouldn't be happening. I've also encountered uh, some strong reactions uh, from very conservative Christians who are troubled by the idea that here is a scientist who calls himself a Christian who also says that evolution is true. That's not the answer that they wanted to hear. Uh, at the same time, it is uh, what the facts are teaching us, and as I have often said, I can't imagine that science, uh, which allows us to peer dimly into God's creation, would in some way threaten God. So here is an opportunity really to understand God better and not to any way upend our awe uh, for what God has created. And so ultimately, it does seem to me that these worldviews of science and faith ought to be possible to discuss in a broader sense, that they need not to have a firewall between them, that the idea that individuals have to live in one of those worldviews during the week and another one on Sunday is essentially, from my perspective, very unsatisfying and unworkable. And we ought to find opportunities uh, to talk about the alternative, which is really to be a fully formed believer and a fully formed scientist on any given Wednesday afternoon. So that as you uncover something as a scientist, which we occasionally get to do, a discovery, something that no human knew before, you also have this sense that God knew that all along and you have now just had the glorious opportunity to glimpse a little bit of God's mind. And that's an experience not to be missed, and I'm happy to talk about that uh, to people who aren't quite sure what that would be like and to encourage others uh, to also imagine that there are ways of finding truth.